Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, the Unnatural Thoughts podcast on Psychology of the Unknown's YouTube channel. I'm Shannon, we're here with Josh, Jared, and Ben, and we're going to be discussing the dirty laundries. That's Brian Laundry and the killing of Gabby Petito. So uh, Jared has, uh, he was at a party last night and he lost his voice. So if he talks, he's going to be somewhat difficult to understand. Um, so Ben, since you are the other, one, the only other one who is intimately familiar with this case, you want to get us started? Sure. Um, well, let's see. We we know uh, that it all started with um, the the finding of Gabby Petito's body. She had been killed by suff suffocation, strangulation. And, um, you know, that's well known to be a, a crime committed usually by someone you know, so it's an intimate crime. Um, we know that she and her boyfriend, Brian, who'd been together for quite some time, been traveling, um, you know, via their minibus uh, cross country. Um, there were lots of reports of abuse between the two of them, specifically from Brian to Gabby. Um, he was a very controlling, um, and, uh, uh, ultimately, um, they found her body. He came home, uh, after she was dead, but he came home and did not report her missing or report anything about what happened. Uh, and then he disappeared and his parents, uh, blocked the investigation. They refused to answer any questions or say where he was, um, Apparently, there was indications that he'd gone to this reserve in preserve in Florida and uh, a place that he'd gone many, many times before. And they knew the areas that he frequented there. So they told the police, but they waited a week to tell the police anything. By the time the police got there, um, they were able to find uh, items belonging to Brian Laundry, uh, and next to those they found Brian Laundry's remains. At first it wasn't determined until they did dental records, they determined that they were in fact Brian's remains. Um, they think that part of the reason the body wasn't found sooner by search parties and cadaver dogs and so forth was because most of the area he was in was underwater for about a week prior to discovery. So there was a lot of, um, a lot of uh, decomposition to the body. Was, they had to resort to dental records in order to determine it was him. But at this point where we're at in the investigation, they haven't released uh, his cause of death. Um, everybody speculated probably a gunshot wound, probably a single gunshot wound by him. But they also haven't mentioned if a weapon was found on scene. Um, I only know of the, there's a black, um, a black binder book that they found that has possibly the description of exactly what happened to Gabby in it, but they haven't released that yet. So that's about where we are right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've got a, I've got a few things here that are kind of boggling my mind, right? Hmm. The body being underwater, I mean, depending on the pH level within the water, would actually hmm. preserve it. Hmm. However, it, that area is known to have hogs and alligators, which would chow on it. But you would think That's there wouldn't have been much left. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. But then you would also figure that if hogs and alligators were after the body, that it would have, the body would have been moved. Yes. But yeah. yet it was found right next to a backpack with the notebook, both of which belonged to him. Yeah. That, that should be fishy enough uh, as far as the possibility of that happening. Uh, the, the other if thing it was a suicide and a gun was involved, it's possible hmm. that that gun would have gotten buried in the mud if it was underwater. That's true. It is a real picture quick, of Gabby with a gun. Real quick. Uh, Billy has just joined us now, so uh, better late than never, Billy. <laughs> and you're, you're muted. muted. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there better? You go. Yep. yep. I'll figure this out eventually. 
<laughs> All right, every one of us got on and we were muted this time. So, <laughs> so the other thing that I, I just want to throw in there before you fin finish up, Josh, that, that, that was a big part of this was the parents, Brian Laundry's parents, and the fact that uh, when the search party went to the preserve, the parents were there. They went and both of them had now they said they were followed by the press the whole time. Yeah. But apparently while they're looking, they're going through along the trail and the cops are going in between the trees on either side. And Brian's dad went off on his own and was zigzagging in between trees. And lo and yeah. behold, his dad of all people was able to find the uh, canvas bag amongst some, you know, brushes and stuff like that. And he's like, Oh, look, I didn't want to touch it because you know, it's evidence. And then, Again, lo and behold, you know, 25 feet away, there's Brian's body along with another bag and a notebook. And it's like, whoa, it's there it is. And, there, and there was video evidence of him going off on his own. Um, yeah. Mike, which one of you shared that video? I think it was Ben. Ooh. No, it wasn't me. Maybe it was me. I think it was you, Jared. Yeah, I, it think, was it was, I think it was Jared. Yeah. Uh, it actually showed uh, someone was following them with a camera. Uh, it might have been a cop with their um, uh, body cam. Yeah, with their body cam on. Uh, not exactly for sure. Uh, but there, it does show the dad going off on his own into the woods. Almost like he was picking a spot deliberately mm -hmm. to go into. Yeah. Well, yeah. there again, though, if it was underwater, why wasn't that stuff wet? Yeah, exactly. it was it destroyed, up. right? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I find it funny like, that it was in a bag. Yeah, like you know, he knew it was gonna like flood or something. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that throws me off about the whole thing is why was it already skeletal? It's like they yeah. had to identify the body by dental records. A month isn't long enough for a body to decompose that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's like, so they must have had some lime in there. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how they got the dental records anyway. Yeah, because uh, there's they, pieces they, found. They would have had to get a court order in order to for the dentist to be able to yeah. grant that information. And that takes mm. more than just 24 hours. Yeah. So, That's a reason I, well, I asked. I mean, let's face it, CFBI, they just wanted the case over there, <laughs> right? So yeah. it's pretty easy to just go, oh, yeah, yeah, that was his body. We're done. We're going to mark yeah. it as suicide. Yeah. Let's move on. Exactly. There it is. It's suicide. We'll tie <laughs> it up. It's all done. And uh, he killed Gabby. It's all good. We're, we're all done with it. And yet, Part of the reason I asked if they were wealthy, and this could very simply be, I've watched way too much CSI, yeah, um, but there's something that bothers me about Brian Laundrie's parents' involvement in all this and how they dealt with things. To me, um, I think, how hard is it to fake dental records or how hard is it to put a different set of teeth, uh, you know, at a crime scene, how hard would it be to escape your son if you have the means and the wherewithal? You know, how hard would it be to make your son disappear to another country, ev evading grand. any having to pay for this? Because oh, he's dead. Yeah, you know, about, about ten grand. <laughs> there you go. About, and, you know, you know, they can afford that. That's that. A, that that's a mother's love. <laughs> a mother's love for her child. Can be yeah. Close dangerous thing on earth right well 90% like, of women with the mother hi i'm sm cornthwaite there's a creepy new book series out for the young one in your life or the young at heart check out hollow screams day of the dolls and hollow screams ghost house now available on amazon read them together these tales are thrillers and yeah. that's why 90% of women are in prison is because somebody messed with their kid. Mess with their babies. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like don't mess with a mother and her babies. And that, yeah. you know, right there, you got it. Like whatever was going on, uh, she, it feels like she was supporting of, of him regardless of, I mean, they've never commented on 
uh, that I've heard anyway, the abuse in the relationship or what their son was like in a negative way. They really haven't said much of anything. I honestly believe Gabby was the abuser in the relationship because he's the one that had marks all over his face and everything else when the cops stopped him in that restaurant. And it's like the way everybody was telling it, the way that she, everybody was telling in the restaurant, it's like they seen her hitting him and she was an emotional wreck and he was just sitting there taking it. Sounds like a to me. And a lot That's of not- a lot of abuse between men and hmm. women is you hear about the women getting beat on, but a good 70% of report, reported cases aren't being reported because it's a woman getting beat up, beaten up a man. Yes. And our pride won't, our, our men won't I, I turn can, that stuff in. I can definitely attest to that. My, uh, my relationship with my oldest daughter's mom, uh, she was very abusive. Uh, in fact, even uh, one day when we were in, at Steak and Shake with some friends, uh, I said something that, didn't agree with her and she choked me right there in front of everybody and i'm talking wrapped her hands around my throat and just started strangling me so yeah yeah you got you what you kind of got got you got homer you got homer simpson yeah yeah (laughs) Uh, a lot of their friends said that he was controlling and abusive um maybe that time could have been just snap and she had enough I, I could honestly the, 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 I can honestly see like he finally had enough out there in the desert wherever they're at and just left her and she just fell off the cliff where she com- she committed suicide herself she was strangled though. it was like yeah well so was an Epstein but that's a whole different subject <laughs> oh yeah that's that's a different <laughs> rabbit hole <laughs> <laughs> So controversial. But you know what? You could be right. That just simply what could have happened was if she was the abuser, his choking her could have been in self-defense, as horrible as that is. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I have only ever been um, hit by one woman, and I remember not knowing what to do with my hands. Like, I yeah. remember being like, no, they're going to be over here. Like, it's it just uh-huh. so you know it's always possible especially if they were doing drugs together if the if it was a contentious relationship already if she started going at him and hitting him maybe he choked her you know out of self-defense she wound up dead and he panicked and took off home and his parents panicked and were like we got to hide you we got to do whatever and uh you know but it's from there you know how quick are they going to close this case Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's like, well, that area where they found her body is called the dead man zone. It's like there's a 700 mile stretch there where bodies just disappear all the time. As wow. uh, one of the podcast, other podcasts I actually listened to the uh, with uh, Elijah Schaefer. And he had a guest on there that was explaining about that. It's like on a yearly basis, 700, uh, I don't know, in, what I'm supposed to call it, Indians, Native okay. Americans, indigenous <laughs> people <laughs> go missing all the time and you would think nothing's ever done about it you would think uh they would set up like a ranger station there or something since people are constantly going missing there (laughs) exactly well it's it's just such a wide area that they they can't there's no way to patrol because it's all mountain Mm. it's like it's really hard to navigate that area yeah it's you know this case has been so weird since the beginning. It really has. You know, uh, both, uh, both families are benefiting. They're getting money from the from the paparazzi and everything else. So yeah, right. like, uh, what was it? He left her in uh, one of the states and went home for a few days to clear out his storage, and then yeah. went back. And she stayed in the hotel the whole time. Yeah, uh, her dad bought her to her dash or something like that, and uh, I'm just like, I don't, I don't know, I don't. It's weird to me because then it was like after he came back is when um, things seemed to go downhill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, well, I'm just trying to figure out why they haven't released her body yet. Um, she's that's the cremated. 
Yeah. Oh, that's what they're saying now. She's cremated now. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that convenient? Right. Yeah, because they were trying to sit for a month and a half during during the very beginning. They wouldn't release the body at all. They didn't even do an autopsy for the first month and a half. After that, all any evidence that's on that body is already destroyed. Because you got you got a forty eight to seventy two hour window to collect skin samples to collect the any DNA that's on the body. So they can say, oh yeah, he choked her, he killed her, he did it. They can say whatever they want now and, and put it on them. So just like mm-hmm. with his body, he's like, oh, they can say and do whatever they want now because there's there's a body, but you can't really prove anything. It's true. I mean, they were they were even mentioning that some theory at one point was that he just left her in the yeah. middle of the desert in Wyoming, took off, went home, and she was actually found by a serial killer who killed her. Uh, that was one theory I heard being purported yeah. about that, the, that that was a possibility as well. But if that was what happened, his his behavior from the time he left the second time onward makes absolutely no sense. If he was just like, well, I just left her there because, you know, we weren't getting along. I didn't kill her. You know, yeah. instead he disappears. And, you know, this is really weird. Like that same week. Um, they found a hiker and then they found a uh, couple that was mm-hmm. uh, camping around there. So that's like four dead bodies in a month. What's it's, up it's, with that spot, man? It's it's the dead man zone. That's because there's no cell service. You can't, not even a ham radio won't, won't even reach But you can't there. even call for help yeah. there. You're done. Yeah. Like, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A ham radio is won't even reach in there. So, you know what? That's probably why they're not setting up a ranger station. No ranger is going to be like, I'm not going there. Hell no. Right. I'm not sitting in a <laughs> ranger so, station. Dead man's. I, hell no. I so blame Bigfoot. I'm, I'm reading over the. I was the, thinking that myself. I'm, Bigfoot. I'm reading over the Wikipedia page on this whole situation. And there was a quote from her, from Petito, uh, that was actually recorded on the officer's body cam during the uh, domestic disturbance incident. Mm -hmm. she says yeah i don't know if some days i have really bad ocd i was just cleaning and straightening up back in the i was apologizing to him and saying i'm sorry that i'm so mean because sometimes i have ocd and sometimes i can get really frustrated not like mean towards him i just like i just my vibe is i'm in a bad mood and i was just saying i'm sorry if i'm in a bad mood i just I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning and I just now quit my job to travel across the country and I'm trying to start a blog. I have a blog. So I've been building my website. I've been really stressed and he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it. So we just been fighting all morning and he wouldn't let me in the car before. Uh, Petito first downplayed the physical altercation but after the officer pointed out marks on her arm and face and told her to just be honest, she told him that laundry kept telling me to shut up and grab my face and showed the officer a wound that she had from it and said that it burned. Uh, laundry told the officer, I said, let's just take a breather and let's not go anywhere and just calm down for a minute. She was getting worked up and then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys from me. I was just trying to, I know I shouldn't push her. I was just trying to push her away to go. Let's take a minute and step back and breathe and see. She got me with her phone. So the way this reads is, I don't know how much you guys know about domestic violence situations, but when two people are in a relationship and there is domestic violence, especially this young, nine times out of 10, if the boyfriend or husband is abusive towards the girlfriend or wife, I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder. So. But normally, don't worry, it's rolling pretty good down here too. Yes. Normally, what will happen is the girlfriend or wife 
I will like try sound. to make excuses. But if I'm not, they will. Sound, hey, Josh, can you mute for a minute? <laughs> Sorry. Not a problem. Uh, a lot of times, what will happen is the girlfriend will downplay, it. not like what they explain here. Uh, they will come up with any reason whatsoever to keep from get it, giving the boyfriend or husband's name and saying what they actually did. Uh, they'll say, uh, oh, I, I scraped myself, I, I hit the door, or something like that. The mm -hmm. fact that she came forward so quickly with this, and they stayed together. It wasn't like they broke up and she came right. forward. They were still mm -hmm. together about it. And the what, what he's saying, it almost it does actually seem like she was the abusive one. And if that's the case, then that does lend credence to my theory that I've explained to you guys, which I'll bring up, I'll talk about here in just a little bit. So what are your guys' thought about, thoughts about that? Um, I think they were both toxic to yeah. each other. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I know there's been, there's a story where once um, she was going out with birds and he snuck her debit card cash out of her wallet along with her ID. So when she got to the thing, she was like, ah, oh, but I can't get into places. I can't pay for anything. So she had to go back. And then he told co-workers that that van that was hers was his, and he traded his Mustang for it. But as we've seen, that Greg Mustang was still at home because the van wasn't his, it was Gabby's. So I think, I don't know, you know, when you get two people, they, and, and if they're toxic for each other, it, it, it can go down really bad. And I think yeah. they're just abusive to each other in yeah. any way they could. Yeah, I definitely think that too. I think I think uh, there, there's a story that came out recently uh, about an incident in August where the two of them went to a Mary Piglet's Tex-Mex restaurant in Jackson. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently, according to the staff and the, uh, the assistant manager of the uh, Mary Piglet's, the two of them particularly Brian was very loud and angry towards the staff and abusive, verbally abusive to the staff. And apparently you can see him on video uh, leaving the restaurant and going back in and leaving and going back in multiple times, angry, like slamming the door open and stuff, but none of them witnessed any physical um, altercation or anything between the two of them. Um, all they witnessed was Brian being angry. So it doesn't the other thing that was weird was apparently gabby's mom received some odd text messages yeah. from her uh one of them one of them she was like to this day apparently she's like i don't know what this means but there's something it's not right she sent a text message to her mom saying can you help stan i just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls yeah. Uh, according to that, according to her mom, that was Stan was in reference to Gabby's grandfather. But the weird thing is, she never once referred to him as Stan in her entire life yeah. until this text message. Uh, and then the text messages stopped completely. Um, so, it, it, you know, her, her mom's like, I don't know what any of that meant. Uh, what the hell was she getting at? Um, was she asking for help without asking for help, like in some really weird way? Um, but it does seem, I think Jared's spot on. I think this is the perfect storm of two very troubled people who wound up together and exacerbating each other's issues. And you got to think too, they, oh, they were from different parts of the country. Like she Ooh. was from New York. He was yeah. from Florida. And I think it was like they met online or something. Online, it? yeah. So you, you know how that usually goes. Um, maybe there was things exchanged online that was perfect. And then once they got together, they was like, this is nothing like it was supposed to be. Yeah. And 
but they didn't want to be alone. So they stayed together and became more toxic. Yeah, they were probably more afraid of what their lives looked like separately than right. together, and yet they were just so bad for each other. Exactly. See, to me, yeah. re reading the rest of this, it almost seems like Gabby was a dependent personality. Um, because on here, uh, she uh, Laundry told the officer, I said, let's just take a breather and let's go anywhere and just calm down for a minute. She was getting worked right. up and then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys for me. I was just trying to, I know I shouldn't push her, I was just trying to push her away to go. Let's take a minute and step back and breathe and see. She got me with her phone. Petito told the officer that she hit laundry first and asked the officers to not separate them. Mm -hmm. In the report, the officers wrote that at no point in the investigation did Gabriel stop crying, breathing heavily, or compose a sentence without needing to wipe away tears, wipe her nose, or rub her knees with her hands. The male tried to create distance by telling Gabby to take a walk to calm down. She did not want to sep be separated from the male and began slapping him. He grabbed her face and pushed her back as she pressed upon him and the van. Neither Petito nor Laundry wanted to press charges as a result of the incident, which was characterized by police as a mental emotional health break, break rather than a, as domestic violence. Uh, the police separated the couple, arranging for Laundry to spend the night at the Bowen Motel in Moab and for Petito to stay in the van. The Moab Police Department is investigating if the officers handled the case in accordance with blah, 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 blah. So this, this tells me that she, uh, the, to me, the, I it looks like she was the abusive one. She was a depend. She's a dependent personality, um, likely a dependent had dependent personality disorder. Uh, and was she an only child? Because that's what I'm reading from this. <laughs> um, I think so. Between her mom and dad, I believe so. Okay. I think she had half siblings. She seems like she was raised as an only child yeah. from what I'm gathering from uh, these conversations I'm seeing on here. Um, likely spoiled, used to getting her way. Um, it doesn't really say to me that he was abusive. It may have been a toxic relationship on both sides, but it doesn't look to me at all like he was abusive at in the least he was trying to pull, get himself away from the situation to calm down uh she basically left him with no choice but to you know push back you know um Dang. single white female syndrome she uh she's actually one of six half brothers and sisters with one brother that shares the same parents oh, okay. both oh. of the same parents her brother tj okay uh, who's younger? So it could okay. be a lack of a, a lack of attention since there were so many of them. And Likely, because yeah. it's a it's a blended family issue, there could have been massive issues within the blended family side. You know, with the you know sisters or brothers not getting along. Who knows what she was dealing with? When you have right. that many kids, it's. Like, I mean, yeah. why would she want to move from New York to Florida? Anyway? Well, you know, who wouldn't want to move out of Florida? Or move out of New York. Yeah. Right. I'm well, you know what I <laughs> Yeah. It, it could be your it could be your basic middle child syndrome. You know, totally if she had older siblings from a previous uh previous relationship, um and some of them were living with the parents or whatever, mm -hmm. she could have had uh middle child syndrome too. Uh which is also a good cause, a likely cause for dependent personality disorder. They're not used to, um, they, they're, they're used to sharing everything. Yeah. You know, middle yeah. children, they've got to share with the older siblings. They've got to share the affection of their parents. They've got to share their time, uh, their parents' time. They've got to share mm -hmm. with their younger siblings. 
they don't have anything for themselves really yeah that's true yeah so that that's what this is screaming to me i mean uh it, it could be like i like i said earlier first it was screaming to me you know that it was only child uh, syndrome but since she had siblings now it's screaming more like middle child syndrome which is pretty much it's very similar they're both mm. very similar mm. But Just not enough attention to go around or too right. much attention. Right. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to stick with my original theory, even though I don't know everything about this case. I wasn't, uh, I haven't been paying attention to it like uh, Ben and Jared have. Uh, Billy, I'm not sure how much you've been paying attention to it. Uh, Josh, I know you said that uh, you haven't really been paying much attention to it. But I'm thinking that uh, the mother, uh, Laundry, Brian Laundry's mom, she was a very, she had a very unhealthy relationship with her son. Very similar to the Slover case, where um, Karen Slover's mother in law, ex mother in law, uh, had a very inappropriately attached uh relationship with her grandson uh so much so that she was breastfeeding her grandson karen's son um well past two years old herself yeah uh karen silver's mother-in-law was breastfeeding her grand grandson uh she admitted it to several friends what? yeah exactly <laughs> uh and that's kind of what i'm seeing here uh, that's the kind of relationship I'm seeing between Brian Laundry's mom and him. She found out about the toxicity of the relationship, about the abuse. She followed them on their trip, found out where they were. She attacked Gabby, strangled her, took Brian home. Brian was going to turn himself in. She killed Brian to keep him close. They do have like three flower beds in the backyard. And I've always thought Brian didn't go home by, or go back to Gabby by himself when he left Florida after they mm -hmm. cleared out the storage cat or storage unit. Mm -hmm. So, well, this also could just be one of the biggest trolls ever. They're both alive and healthy and just out of the country somewhere. And their parents are sending, <laughs> sending them money from all the paparazzi and media right. covers they get. Well, she was trying to be a social media influencer. So. Hey, no better uh, way than to fake your own yeah. death. Yeah. Now, wow. this, this was a um, personal cause homicide. Uh, in fact, it shows elements of spontaneous domestic homicide which for those of you who don't know i'm reading from the crime classification manual third edition uh this was by uh john douglas ann burgess uh alan burgess and robert wrestler uh the same people that the netflix series mind hunter is based off of oh. they are, they are the ones who developed the profiling process and made it what it is today what this says about a spontaneous domestic homicide is a spontaneous domestic murder will not involve staging. Personation in the form of undergoing and undoing is possible, but is for the benefit of the offender and is not intended to mislead law enforcement. Alcohol or uh, drugs may be involved. Fingerprints are often present on the murder weapon. There usually are forensic findings consistent with a personal type of assault. Des or depersonalization evidenced by facial battery, overkill, blunt force trauma, and a focused area of injury is evidence of the personal assault. Manual or ligature strangulation is a common cause of death with domestic homicide. Gunshot wounds are also a forensic finding of this type of killing. The victim may show signs of being washed up or having wounds cleaned. Uh, the victim has a familial or common law relationship with the offender. In addition, there's a history of prior abuse or conflict with the offender. Now that right there on the surface, 
does scream Brian Laundry. However, when you compare that with uh, the videos from the police officers and what the police officers documented, that doesn't sound like Brian Laundry would have performed the act of killing her. Mm. Um, he wanted to take himself away from the situation and calm down. She was persistent. In fact, if he was the one who was found strangled, we would be able to tell for a fact that, yes, she was the one who actually did it. But because of him trying to take himself out of the situation, uh, whenever things got violent or uh, intense, it's not really saying to me that he's the one who strangled her. Hmm. Yeah. Not. I mean, this, like I've said, this whole case has been wishy-washy and strange from the get-go. It's just, it's so weird. Like, when he disappeared, uh, he left on a Monday, he said. Um, they didn't hear from him Tuesday, Wednesday. Found his car and brought it home on Thursday. And then reported him missing on Friday. Mm -hmm. So that to me screams time, giving him time to get out. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's weird. The whole thing is, the whole thing's weird and just nuts. Yeah. I, me personally, I'd like to be able to just say yeah so i think he killed her in a drug fueled rage and drove home feeling like crap uh he'd killed his soulmate and you know went home depressed and then got his stuff packed his stuff up went and committed suicide but there's just way too much other extraneous evidence and circumstantial evidence that makes absolutely no sense that it's really hard for me to draw that as the conclusion Right. Yeah. And they, it's not like they, that law enforcement investigation investigators have released um, the extent of Gabby's injuries um, exactly. when they found her body. Uh, they haven't released what, uh, what bones or human remains they found of Brian's since it's dent, since they got dental records. Likeliness, they found his lower jaw. Yeah, they said they found like one was a piece of skull. Okay. Wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Which to me, if they found skull fragments, that's mostly like gunshot wound to the head. Yeah, could definitely. Yeah, but again, with the amount of wild boar and yeah. uh, alligators down there. That could have also include, been part of why they only found parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was sitting here thinking, I would like to know what the relationship was between Laundry's parents and Gabby. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Was, was yeah. it a good relationship? In which case, when they find out that Brian killed her, they flipped out and killed him? Was Maybe. it a... Uh, were they disheartened by the fact and figured, all right, he's just going to go out and, you know, cool off a little bit, right. come back in, then we can figure this out and he goes right. and suicide? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I know. I really believe that they knew where he was at the whole time. Mm -hmm. They right. just didn't want to admit it. No. And I if would... you look at the video from when they uh, when they found the bag and the remains, it almost looks like his mom is kind of directing his dad, you know, in a way of where to go, you oh, know, yeah. go off. Mm -hmm. and, and then he, she just took off by herself down right. the trail. And I vote like I, I said, I don't think his dad wore the pants in that relationship. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just that little bit I've seen and heard of them. It looks like she's the dominant, dominant personality in the relationship, and he's the submissive. She's like a former lawyer or something. I think makes you wonder if they you know, have a similar relationship to Gabby and Brian. Mm -hmm. All right. And I was like, just getting ready to say that I think uh, if with his mom being more dominant, 
wouldn't Brian become more submissive to Gabby then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. out of human nature. That's what he's used to. Yeah. Yep. So he'd be more submissive to her, and then I think it's it was more of maybe a self defense killing. Yeah. Um, Possibly. I know. Gabby and his sister had a good relationship, and her kids loved Gabby. Mm -hmm. uh, she released text messages, and she was like, "Hey, tell them that Uncle Brian and Aunt Gabby got them something, and it was like one of the parks they went to." Or something. Yeah, and Gabby's parents didn't really; they had a decent relationship with Brian too. Um, mm -hmm. Her dad said that. Um, he met him, and there didn't seem to be anything off. He actually right. kind of liked the guy. Um, no red flags, he said. Right. Yeah. As as a father myself, mm -hmm. if someone's abusive towards my kid, I'm gonna know it. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. I'm, I'm gonna see it in the eyes. You know, in the personality change. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. The fact that he didn't get any of that again tell tells the story that Gabby was the dominant personality. She was yeah. she was the abusive personality. Yeah. They were both toxic in their own way, but she was the abusive but she was the she was the major aggressor of the two of them. Right. And in some of the pictures she took for Instagram or whatever, he's always just like kind of chilling and she's like this is very grab and he's just kind of like instant pose. Yeah. Like he's been told you need to smile or something. Makes you wonder if uh, if maybe he killed her because he was afraid for his life. If like it makes me think of uh, do you remember the Jody Arias case? Uh, yeah. Where Jody Arias killed her boyfriend her ex boyfriend in the shower. Um, we actually well, just talked about that in forensics class. Nice. nice. Uh, but this this kind of you know has that element because uh, you know Jody was the abusive one in that friendship. She in that relationship, she was uh, stalking and create and you know he. So I, I wonder if maybe that was a similar situation here. Yeah, it's very likely. Um, you know, I just the more we're talking about it, the more I'm leaning towards. Uh, her being the abusive one. Yep. I don't think it was a self-defense killing. Uh, self-defense killings usually don't involve strangulation. Strangulations, yeah. That's no. more of a personal rage killing. Uh, self-defense would be a gunshot wound, uh, getting hit in the head with a very heavy object, very hard object. Mm -hmm. um, strangulation does not scream self-defense to me. Strangulation screams, you know, I'm going to make you pay, bitch. Yeah, right. I think it may also depend on the situation, too. Yeah. If he didn't have anything around him to really hit her with, but his, his reach is longer than hers, I go for the well, next thing try to push her back, and next thing I know, you know, she's about to pass out, and I'm seeing a scapegoat here. I can finally get out of this thing and just finish it off. So, yeah, it's still self-defense at first, and then moved into uh the i'd say more of a, an excitement relief yeah hmm. well we'll, yeah. we'll most likely never know because they cremated the body and there's fragments of his body found so yeah exactly yeah. It, it's just gonna be whatever whatever we're told is what it's gonna be well so I as think... of two days ago the fbi closed the case so i'm sure they're just labeling it as a. Uh, Oh, they did as suicide. Murder they suicide did actually. Murder. They did actually close the case. Yeah, yeah. I searched it, and it said as of two days ago they closed the case. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna start going around in circles here. Billy, did you have something to say, real quick? Nope. All right, that's just. <laughs> I think we're gonna start getting to. We're kind of past the point where we're gonna be going into circles. <laughs> totally. We'll just so, say the same thing. That's when the fun begins. Though. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Josh, let's hear your final thoughts. Right. Final thoughts. I think that it started off as uh, self-defense, finished as relief, goes home, tells the family, family freaks out. And uh, I'm just going to go off the wall here and Cassie killed uh, his sister, killed him. And the parents are trying to cover everything up. Ah, nice. Okay. Uh, 
cool. Jared, let's hear your final thoughts. Uh, well, that does make kind of sense. Like maybe she killed him, but she went to the campgrounds to see him and his parents. And they was like, he killed Gabby and, they, and he needs to run. And she was like, oh, what? what? What did you do? And maybe, who knows? But my final thoughts are when it comes down to it, what we're going to hear is um, the notebook says he did it. He killed himself because he felt bad and knew there was no way out. Yep. And that'll be the end of the case closed. Just because if there's anything deeper, what's it matter? They got two dead bodies. Right. Lovers, yep. turmoil. Um, but my final thoughts are I do believe his mom was dominant to his dad. Brian picked up on that. So when he got in a relationship, maybe it was the same way. Um, I also believe that Brian feared losing Gabby and possibly did try to control her. But maybe, you know, like I said, with taking the debit card and the money and stuff, that's that's very controlling right there. You know, uh, you can't go now because you don't have your money and I don't know what to tell you. Um, either way. I believe they were both toxic to each other and it just maybe a fight got out of hand and, or he strangled her. Cause like I said, you know, uh, friends have said that he strangled her before while they were on a bad ass trip. So I think just a lot of stuff happened and we're not going to know everything. It's just, I believe we're just going to get, they got into it. He killed her out of a passion. Uh, freaked out, drove home, uh, disappeared, and killed himself because he felt bad. And Billy, let's hear your final thoughts. I believe they're both alive and well. They are getting their 15 minutes of fame now. They'll be getting their book deals. We'll have a movie out here soon, <laughs> and most likely a Five TV times. series about it. <laughs> They got their. They got their fifth. She, she got her fifteen like minutes it. of fame, and they're in Cuba where they can't be extradited. <laughs> Billy, <Right>. Lifetime <laughs> or Hallmark? Both. Ooh, two separate ones. Two yeah. separate ones. Nice. From, from, from each perspective. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Lifetime <laughs> will be Gabby's. Hallmark will be Brian's. Yeah. <laughs> ben, let's hear your final thoughts. Uh, yeah, I think, um, I, I'm, I'm with you guys. I, I mean, I think, uh, Jared, I'm with you in terms of, I think most likely it's what it looks like. Um, there's the part of me that would love to say, yeah, I think he left her there and then Bigfoot strangled her. But, uh, I, I just, uh, you know, the evidence for what happened to Brian after what happened to Gabby is all very weird to me. Uh, and I'm kind of on the line as to whether I think Brian's actually dead or not. Uh, I do think Gabby's dead, but whether Brian's dead, I don't know. Um, and uh, but I don't think we're ever going to know 100 percent because I think this once the once this is done and they're like, yep, this is it. They're going to say the same thing like what Jared said. They're always going to say, guys, looking any further into this isn't going to bring them back. It's not going to change the fact that they're both dead and uh, you know, this is what it looks like. This is what it is. So I think it's just going to be wrapped up like with a night, nice neat bow and all the police can go home, but there's definitely some shady stuff that's going on with this case that yeah. there's something not right. My final thoughts are, uh, as I've told you guys um, there, I, I agree to an extent with uh, all of you. Um, I do think that the relationship was toxic on both sides. I think Gabby was the abusive one, uh, physically abusive, uh, verbally abusive. Uh, Brian seems more like he would have been, um, mildly controlling, uh, maybe, um, emotionally abusive to an extent. Mm -hmm. Um, but ultimately I think he and his mom had this very twisted relationship where she was just obsessed with her son and wanted to keep him mommy's little boy for, uh, for as long as she was alive. 
Uh, she trailed them to, uh, what was it, the National Park or whatever that they were visiting. Yep. Um, she knew about the physical assaults by Gabby. She strangled, uh, strangled her, saying, uh, how dare you treat my son like that? How dare you lay a hand on my son? You know, she took Brian home. Brian was going to go to the cops. She killed him, buried him in the backyard, kept um, kept some fragments for in case uh, she needed to throw the, uh, throw the scent off. Um, it could even be likely that uh, Brian's sister killed him. That's a possibility too. Mm -hmm. um, so Josh, that's uh, where I get yours from. Uh, Jared, um, I'm trying to think back to what all you said. Uh, I, I think I've actually already mentioned about the toxicity on um, both sides. I, I got that from you. Billy, I do think there's going to be a Lifetime or Hallmark movie. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, ben, uh, I, I think um, you're pretty much in agreement with uh, everyone else for the most part. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, ultimately, I think she was a uh, dependent personality, middle child syndrome, uh, abusive, and this was a personal cause homicide uh, domestically, but not in the way that the media is portraying it. I think ultimately yeah. Brian's mom killed her. Yeah. Either way, it's definitely sad that they're gone, but uh, you know. So yeah. next week, we've since we did two uh, two videos this weekend which this will probably be up tomorrow. I'm, there's no way I'm going to stay up and well, I, I may go ahead and throw it together real quick and put it up. Uh, it won't take long. I don't really have to edit these videos. I just throw the intro on there and the outro, uh, make the movie or make the video and upload it. So I, I could probably do that tonight as soon as it's over with, uh, as soon as it's done rendering or converting or whatever from zoom but next weekend is halloween weekend mm. what are we going to talk about uh, should we do should we do the killers should we do the like michael myers i think we should do like a parody one where we we talk about them like they're real people all right so that, next week, like like profiling them right yes, like the serial yeah. killers yeah, yeah. i All like right, it so, so next week we're going to be profiling jason Voorhees, nice michael myers yeah freddy krueger uh chucky chucky chucky's gonna be a good one charlie and Le ray and leatherface no oh, right. yeah All oh, right. Wow. uh do you guys want to do billy loomis and uh um what was Matthew Lillard's character? Oh, oh, oh Stu, Stu, yeah, Stu. Um, Stu. Good. Do you guys want? Do you guys want to profile them as well? We could. Okay, we'll spend yeah. about ten minutes on each character. Yeah, there you That'd go. Good. Right, that perfect. way we stay under the hour limit. Uh, right. We're at an hour now, so. And it falls into both things the show's about: serial killers and paranormal. And paranormal, exactly. 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 Perfect. All right, so next week we will be doing a parody profile on movie killers from Halloween Scream, Friday the 13th, Halloween. Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, and the Chucky series. We can't actually say Child's Play because Chucky is no part of the child, no longer part of the Child's Play uh, yeah. franchise. So, which makes no oh, sense. And Texas Chainsaw um, Massacre. Yeah. Nice. So. I've been Shannon. We've got Josh. We got Jared. We got Ben. We got Billy. Thanks for tuning in to the Unnatural Thoughts podcast right here on Psychology of the Unknown. I'm going to forgo all the uh, ads this time since we're at an hour now. Um, we're going to put together some videos to uh, short little ad videos to intermingle in the future nice. podcasts. And uh, Jared, since. Um, this is actually full frame videos. 
you're going to actually have to say something in order to promote uh, Masters of the Geek first and not just hold, <laughs> hold up the uh, card because they can't see you when you're not talking. All right. So there's that. Um, I'm thinking within the next couple of weeks to a few weeks, uh, we're going to be up doing the podcast like we used to. Um, I have a different special guest each week. And uh, I'll be trying to make an actual YouTube channel for Masters of the Geek Parks. Um, maybe try to get Shannon to teach me how to edit some stuff. <laughs> Fun by man. I'm free Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, along with uh, Saturdays and Sundays for the most part. So. All right, man. I appreciate All right. it. All right. All right. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, guys. And we will be back next week with the Unnatural right. Thoughts podcast. Take care, everyone. Awesome. Have a good one, guys. Do. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.